Good morning, Heavenbound family, and anyone who may be listening. This is Pastor Larry with a moment in the Word on this uh, the third day of September 2021, and it is Friday. And um, hope that you've had a good week thus far, and hope that today go well for you, and as you enter into the weekend that uh, uh, you'll have a be able to spend some time with the family and. Um, Maybe take him out to God's house Sunday and worship the Lord together. Uh, meantime, we've been studying there the fifth chapter of the book of Romans. So you remember the first uh, week we went one through eight, and then we went eight through twelve, and then we went thirteen down through twenty-one. The last two verses of chapter five introduces chapter six. So, uh, notice here in, in, in uh, verse twenty of uh, chapter 5. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. In other words, the law makes or reveals to us what sin is. And um, so um, knowing what sin is, uh, we uh, it, it abounds within us. In, in other words, when I don't know what sin is. I don't know that I've committed sin. Uh, I've still sinned, but um, uh, I'm not aware so much that I've sinned. But when I pick up the Ten Commandments and I read the Ten Commandments and I realize that a lying's a sin, that stealing's a sin, that covetous is a sin, that uh, uh, not honoring the Lord's day is a sin, that um, uh, and, and so forth. We go all through the Ten Commandments, sir. Then sin becomes more; it, it abounds. But notice when when he said, "But for uh, grace, uh, where sin does abound, grace does so much more so abound." That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, now then, picture Paul is uh, three or four hundred miles away, and he is writing to the church there at Rome. He's not going to be there to explain the letter to them. And chapter 6 is almost like the Holy Spirit checks him and says, Paul, you know, when you send that letter down there to Rome, there's going to be some some uh, less than mature Christians. There's going to be some tears in the church. Who's going to say, well, now, if the more uh, sin or where sin does abound, Grace does so much more so abound. Why don't we sin more that there might be more grace? And so Paul starts, uh, starts out chapter 6 in answering that question. He's not going to be there to um, speak up when the letter is read. So he decides, okay, he better address that where sin does abound, grace does so much more so abound there in verse 20 and point out that uh, uh, because where sin does abound, grace does so much more so abound, is not a license to sin more. So notice what he, how he starts out verse 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You see, when we accept Jesus Christ, we are born again. To be born again, we must die. To be born again, to become a new creation in Christ Jesus. And so Paul says here, what shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know you not that as many of you as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? 
Uh, picture this just for a moment, what Paul is saying here. He's saying, just like Jesus died for us, we die to sin for him. Now then, just like Jesus was buried in the tomb, we are buried in baptism. Uh, this is why immersion is really the only proper way to baptize in light of what baptism means. It means to cover over. It means a, 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 a burial. And, and so Paul says, know you not that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, we were baptized into his death. In other words, just like Christ died before he was buried, we died as self. And then we are symbolically buried in a watery grave. Now, notice what he goes on to say there. He says, um, just like as Christ rose up from the grave by the glory of the Father, even so we also should rise up to walk in newness of life. In other words, becoming a Christian, the three steps there is we uh, and I'm not saying the three things involved in being saved. We're saved by God's grace through our faith. But when we when we put faith in Jesus Christ, we see that we are sinners. We die to our sinful ways. We then are buried with Christ in baptism. That just like as Christ rose up from the grave, we rise up from the watery grave to walk in new life with Christ Jesus. Paul goes on to say there, For if we be buried with him in the likeness of his death, then we shall rise with him in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man uh, is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So you, you see what is involved in being saved. I come to the point of where I recognize that as long as I am in control of my life, I am walking in sin. Because in reality, none of us are in control of our lives. A lot of us like to think we are. Uh, you hear people say all the time, it's my body. I'll do with it what I want to. That's incorrect. Your body belongs to God. Even as a sinner, it was God who created you. And Christ died to purchase you. When you sin, you sold yourself over to Satan. When Jesus died on the cross, he died to pay the wage of sin, which is death. He died to pay your sin debt. So, Paul makes this statement in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. He says, what? Know ye not that you're not your own? For you're bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So getting saved is first and foremost uh, coming to that knowledge that we have that, that we are sinners. We confess our sins. In confessing our sins, we die to ourselves. We abandon our life. We repent and we turn from that life to a new life serving Christ. When we get further into chapter 6, uh, he, he will point this out that uh, when you were, before you got saved, uh, you lived one way. Now then that you are saved, you live another way. Uh, before you got saved, you lived for the flesh. Now then you're dead to the flesh that you might live under Christ. And we'll look at that further when we get further down in chapter 6. But uh, notice he says here, knowing this, that the old man has been crucified. In other words, we crucify our flesh. We die to our flesh. And then we bury that old flesh in a watery grave that we might rise up out of that grave to walk in new life with Christ. When we do this, a friend, uh, then we become a child of God. That's what being a Christian is all about. It's dying to ourselves. It's putting our flesh to death that we might live under Christ. Having put the uh, 
flesh to death. We now rise to walk in new life with Christ. Uh, we're buried with him in baptism to rise to walk in new life with Christ. So he says, knowing this, that uh, the old man has been crucified. My friend, when you crucify someone, you put it to death. You kill them. Uh, both the thieves on the cross as well as Jesus, when they were crucified, ultimately died there on that cross. And uh, when we crucify the old man, what means we die to ourselves? Uh, that the old man, that our old will, our old desires, our old priorities might be destroyed. That we should no longer serve sin. My friend, if you can grasp this, then you can grasp what it means to be a Christian. That's what getting saved is all about. Hey, this is Pastor Larry with a moment in the Word. I'm running out of time, so um, let me encourage you. Go forth today. Bless someone. Look for an opportunity to share Christ with someone. And um, then uh, lift them up. Look for somebody you can be a blessing to. It'll bless them. It'll bless you. It'll bless God. And God, as we say every day, will bless you. Go forth and rejoice. Remember today is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it, knowing that uh, if we are a Christian, then he holds us in his hands, and nothing or no one short of self can separate us from that love of God. If you're not a Christian, hey, you can become one right now. Just bow your head. Ask God, meaning it with all your heart. God, I'm ready to die to myself. I surrender my life to you. I accept Jesus Christ and his death on Calvary as a, as a token for my sin. I thank you for forgiving me. And now then, I commit myself to live a life for you. Do this, my friend. Do it faith believing and Jesus will save you. And you can start this new life. Uh, as a Christian, um, pardon me, I don't know why it is when I'm doing devotion, my forehead itches, my nose itches, my ears itches, and uh, and uh, anyway, hey, God is good. This is his day. Rejoice. Be glad in it. Uh, have a blessed and wonderful Friday.